I'm trying to check the fuel. Okay. I want to see whether it has fuel. When we are setting off our cars, okay. we normally want to check whether they are safe down there because someone can easily put something there All right. and uh, we cannot know. So before we start, it is always our responsibility okay. that we check the cars to see whether they are clear. My car is clear. Board, that's so when I enter here. Mm. First of all, you have to sit and see that you're comfortable in the seat. Sure. You have to see that the side mirrors are well positioned. And when I start the engine, of course, we have security measures. We have a cutout down here, which we always switch on so that you start the engine. If mm -hmm. you don't have the authority of starting this car, you can never start it. Sure. So after removing the cutout, we have also a card. And these cards are also placed there's a uh, there's a uh, sit through system a system there's a system we use here and we place the card so it, the car now is ready to move so now i'm removing the card now i have started i have removed the cut out so uh, i'll put my card here Now, I start. So when I start the car, mm. I have to pump it first to see that the gears have enough pressure to go in. So I start my pumping. Oh, 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 so I have my screen here that shows me that now the pressure is enough for the car to start. So I read it from here. When it goes above six, that's when I know now that my car is ready to start. So this vehicle is a, a strong vehicle. When you reach the humps, Thank you so much. I'm called Uamalia Chantal. I'm inspector of police. I'm 42 years old. I'm a mother of five. I'm a Mufumbira by tribe. I come from Kisoro, Uganda. And here in Atmis, I'm an IPO and I'm a, and I'm a, a driver of Mamba. Yes. So where did you get the idea of driving these Mambas, especially in a war prone area? Um, uh, literally, uh, I'm a person who has grown up admiring what men do. Because when I see these big vehicles and I see that women are fearing to drive them and I see some few women also driving them, I feel interested. So I got interested and I learned how to drive it. So that's how I picked interest. I drive it here. There's no problem driving it. In oh, wow. I inspire them. Women should take up even what men do. They shouldn't fear big things. They are all so soft to women. All these things that we are doing, men do them and we also can do them. So there's nothing like a woman should fear. 
me at my age and you see the way I am and I'm very small but I can afford to drive that big that vehicle you see is uh, around six tons but I can drive it and softly and I can feel comfortable with it so I encourage women to take up all the responsibilities they can manage we can do it. Uh, we drive this mamba when we are going outside when we're going to town we take uh, I personally I drive uh, IPOs when they are going for collocation so uh, we do it uh, almost daily. Every time they call us for duty, we have to go and do it. And every time they need, especially a woman driver, I'm always there. This vehicle is, first of all, it's an armored vehicle. It protects us. If, if anything, you know we are in this place that it has insecurity. So we are safe in this vehicle because it is armored. So it is for protection mainly. Really, they always train us for two weeks. And if you are interested, when you are interested in learning something, you don't need a lot of time to learn. So they train us for only two weeks. But because we drive them daily, you keep gaining experience. No, oh, instead I'm protected. I'm not putting my life at stake. I feel good. I feel comfortable with it. I'm not putting my life at stake. It is a vehicle like any other vehicle, though it looks heavy, but it is like any other. Mainly these civilians who see us around here, we don't normally talk to them because we are just passing through. So we don't talk to them. But my fellow police officers, they always tell me, yes, you're the best. And I feel encouraged. Yes, they do, because they are always there on the road. But we always maneuver. We always maneuver them. We love them. We drive slowly. When they refuse to go off road, we have to give them time. Of course, it helps because we as police officers, when we are driving, uh, they don't need to hire drivers outside. So probably we are even saving the money that would be paid by to, to, to drivers outside there. So we as IPOs, most of us, all of us actually, we are drivers, though a few are drivers of the Mamba, but most of us are drivers. So I think it is good because it saves and gives us even good experience, even feel good. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I've achieved the experience of driving a big car, which I had never done. So I feel comfortable, I feel, I actually feel like I can even go back home to Uganda and I start driving those big cars. So I'm encouraged, I feel, when I go back to Uganda, I'll, I'll join the drivers of Mamba. <laughs> I'll be a better person, I'll be a better person because uh, even in Uganda, we don't have ladies who drive these big cars. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, maybe in Uganda they don't allow officers to drive. You can't be a police driver when you're an officer. That's the unfortunate part of it. But if they, had to, if they would allow us, I would be very happy to drive those big cars in police. So they, they, they deploy us as IPOs. But of course, uh, one of the qualifications, you must be a driver. So when we reach here and they tell us, please, those who are interested to drive the big cars, come up. We come up and we do the training. What are you doing right now? I'm trying to check the fuel. Okay. I want to see whether it has fuel. Right. Let us see. 